Let's do an example problem. Phosgene gas, which has the formula COCl2, is 12.1% carbon, 16.2% oxygen, and 71.7% chlorine by mass. Find the number of grams of each element in 254 grams of phosgene. So in the upper right I've shown a picture, a model, of one molecule of phosgene which you can see consists of one oxygen atom, one carbon atom, and two chlorine atoms. Now, we might wonder why isn't phosgene 50 percent chlorine because there are two chlorine atoms out of a total of four. Well, in terms of number of atoms, phosgene is 50 percent chlorine, but by mass it's 71.7 percent chlorine, and that's because atoms of oxygen, carbon, chlorine don't weigh the same. So by mass, phosgene is 71.7 percent chlorine. In terms of number of atoms, it would only be 50 percent. Okay, so let's calculate the number of grams of carbon in 254 grams of phosgene. And the way we do that is we take 254 multiplied by the decimal form of the percentage for carbon, 30.7 grams of carbon. Many students, rather than using decimal forms of percentages, prefer to use a proportion. And what we mean by 12.1 percent carbon is this expression right here on the left, that out of every 100 grams of phosgene, 12.1 of, the, of them are carbon. Well, our new sample is 254 grams of phosgene, so how many grams of carbon must we have? So if you like to use a proportion and then cross multiply and solve for your missing variable, you're welcome to do that. You'll get the same answer, 30.7 grams. We'll do the same thing now with the oxygen. We'll take total sample of phosgene multiplied by the decimal form of the oxygen percentage, 0.162. Notice we've moved the decimal two places to the left, and that gives us 41.4 gram of oxygen. Finally, let's find the chlorine, and we could just answer that chlorine right there, 182.1, and that's because the sum of these three masses must of course add up to 254. If we wanted to show the percentage calculation we would show it just like we have the others. 254 grams multiplied by the decimal form of 71.7 percent and it gives us the same answer. A certain sample of butane contains 288 grams of carbon and 60 grams of hydrogen only. What that means is there isn't any other element besides carbon and hydrogen in butane. Incidentally, butane is what is found in lighters and clickers. It's the fuel in those devices. So let's find the total mass of the sample. Well, that's fairly easy to do. We're simply going to add the grams of carbon and the grams of hydrogen together, 348. If we now want to find the percent of each element in butane, by definition a percentage is the part divided by the whole. Well, the part that is carbon is 288 grams and the whole has a mass of 348 grams. That's going to give us a decimal in our calculator. Let's do the same thing for hydrogen. We could just write the decimal for the percent of hydrogen as 0.172 because, of course, the sum of these two must add up to 1. That is, uh, these percentages, when we convert them into percentages, have to add up to 100 percent because those are the only two types of elements that are in this compound. If we wanted to show the work, this is what we would show, the part that's hydrogen divided by the total. But, of course, we don't want to show a percentage as 
in this case 0.828, we need to put it in its percentage form, which is 82.8% carbon, 17.2% hydrogen. Now, let's find how many grams of carbon and hydrogen are in a 24.2 gram sample of butane. Now, the key here is that the percentages of the elements are the same in any sample of butane. Big sample of butane, small sample of butane, they're all 82.8% carbon and 17.2% hydrogen by mass. So to find the number of grams of carbon in a 24.2 gram sample, we take the total sample mass multiplied by 82.8% in decimal form, which is 0.828, and that gives us 20.0 grams of carbon. If you like to write out proportions, this is what we're trying to show here. In every 100 grams of butane, 82.8 of those grams are carbon. So, in a 24.2 gram sample of butane, how many grams must be carbon? Cross multiply and you'll get the same answer, 20.0 grams of carbon. Now we can calculate the mass of hydrogen. Well, if the total sample mass is 24.2 and carbon is 20, then hydrogen must be 4.2. But if we wanted to show the work, we would do it the same way. We take the total sample mass, 24.2, multiplied by the percentage of hydrogen in decimal form, gives us the same answer. Let's do one more. A 550 gram sample of chromium-3 oxide, which has that formula, Cr2O3, has 376 grams of chromium. How many grams of chromium and oxygen are in a 212 gram sample of chromium-3 oxide? Well, let's first calculate the percentage of chromium because we know the number of grams of chromium, 376, and we know the total sample mass, 550. So we can find the percent of chromium in that 550 gram sample, 68.4%. Since there, is only, uh, there, since there are only two types of atoms, chromium and oxygen, we know that the oxygen must be 31.6% because the sum of these must be 100. Okay, now let's calculate grams of chromium and oxygen in the other sample of chromium-3 oxide. And the key here, again, is that the percentages of the elements are going to stay the same because we have the same element. So big sample, small sample, 550 gram sample or 212 gram sample of chromium-3 oxide, it doesn't matter, it's 68.4 percent chromium, which means in 212 grams of chromium-3 oxide, 145 of those grams are chromium. If you want to write a proportion, this is how you do it. In every 100 grams of chromium-3 oxide, we've got 68.4 grams of chromium. So in a 212 gram sample of chromium-3 oxide, how many grams of chromium? You solve that, you'll get exactly 145. And the amount of oxygen then must be the rest. If the total sample mass is 212 and 145 grams are chromium, then the other 67 must be oxygen, or if you wanted to show the work, you would show 212 grams times 0.316.